Hi, this is Brian, uh, commenting on my first VOD in Fan Patch 1.1. Uh, I'm also known as Dammit online, but you may call me either Brian or Dammit. Uh, this is a matchup uh, as my French vs. Uh, Always Sims Dutch. Many people find this matchup pretty difficult, but I actually think it's pretty possible for both sides to win. Uh, you just gotta play better than your opponent, I think. It's just as difficult, uh, you know, for French against Dutch as, uh, French against, you know, China or many other civs. Anyway, um, here I am just scouting the map. Uh, I'm trying to circle it and look for treasures. Uh, treasures are really important, I think, in every game. Uh, I... I take pride in my treasure scouting skills and uh, I try to get as uh, many as possible because I think it really makes a huge difference in gaming. When you get games where you get like 200 resources more than your opponent, you know, that can mean, uh, you know, like two more muskets in a fast rush or, you know, a barracks out 20 seconds earlier or it, it just, it it can be devastating. On this map, there aren't many treasures, uh, mostly just a small uh, coin burrows, but uh, those can add up too, so that's my main goal. I'm also herding, as you can see. Uh, herding's very important. Uh, almost every top player constantly herds. Uh, uh, you should start at least by two minutes in every game. Earlier the better, but no later than two minutes. That's like my rule. Um, I'm also, I just stole a treasure from Always Sims base. Um, you know, you gotta keep an eye on that. Constantly fight over the little treasures. Uh, I think it, it sometimes frustrates people to lose treasures in these battles. And some people even think this is, uh, unfair, but I think it's all, you know, all fair game since they can steal too. Um, so I'm scouting and I've already sent my first card, which is three Cure de Bois. Um, I hope I pronounced that correctly. I'm American and don't know any other language than English, so I tend to just pronounce things the way it looks. Nothing else too important looks like it's going on here, so uh, let's just wait. This part of the game is usually when I, you know, fast forward in games, but uh, all right. So I selected age up as soon as I collected 800 food, like practically just as, uh, because you know. When you age up, it makes a big difference. You know, when you get your hosters out, uh, it might mean the difference between raiding, you know, a vill or two or none at all. So uh, I chose the 400 wood politician, which is pretty standard. I'm following a pretty standard build order here. Uh, I'm going for um, five huster semi FF, but possibly staying in colonial, depending how colonial heavy my opponent will go. Uh, as you see, I'm scouting his base because it's very important uh, to know what your opponent's going to do. With Dutch, you can usually expect them to start with the stables, but if he ends up doing like a Ford barracks or something, you know, uh, I don't want to just have the stables out and not be prepared for it. I mean, if he's going to do like a rush, uh, I might get the stables out first and go for Husser, but. Uh, my first shipment instead in H2, instead of four cure de bois, would probably be eight crossbows. So here I am constantly scouting and trying to avoid his town center fire. Uh, as I reach H2, I'm also getting all the uh, colonial, all the discovery age market techs. Uh, market technologies, of course, are very important as well. With France, although they don't have a real boom. Their economy is great simply because they have so many available resources at the start, uh, uh, slightly higher villager count than normal, and uh, you know they are able to get all these market techs, and it really you know helps. And also, getting map control for hunts makes a huge difference as well. I mean, uh, you know, a hunt can 
when you fully upgrade your market, it can gather about 50% faster than berries. So I scout and I see he has a stables, and he put it in front of his base, which is actually pretty unusual. It's not typically a good idea to put stables in front of your base. Um, but then again, I decided to do it too, because I guess I wasn't paying that much attention. It's very easy to put behind the base because, you know, Husher run to the front of battle pretty fast anyway. I mean, uh, normally when you put something in front of your base, it means that you want to get them out into the field of battle really quickly. Uh, if you want, or maybe to protect villagers or something. But stables, it's better just to put behind your base since the reinforcements from them come rather fast. I'm trying to queue up my first five Hussar, and uh, so this way, if we get into Cav War, which we will, um, it's you know you need at least five Hussar if you want to win that battle, because Dutch normally can get out five Hussar the start, and then it's pretty much micro wars. Here you see always some only has four Hussar though, so I attack, and you know I'm constantly clicking on different ones trying to. Make sure you know every Huster is doing good damage. It's uh, it's important you know when you have the opportunity when you're able to micro as well as you can. You know like when not so many things are going on, then you really should focus on the minor details like you know just five Huster against three Huster. But here he gets his Pike shipment out. I'm guessing that was his second shipment instead of 700 wood is more common for Dutch. Normally they get 700 wood after they get a bank out, um, but I guess he's trying to play more aggressively. Because of this I'm a little pressured, so instead normally I uh, normally I ship 700 wood and I just get one barracks and some crossbows and pikes out, but since he has a pretty decent army coming I go for double barracks so I can uh, use all my uh, unspent resources to get some muskets out. Um, trying to pay attention to my villagers, unfortunately I didn't research uh, the villager HP hit point tech uh, because I I guess I want to get my Huster out and I sort of forgot to get that. So here he is attacking and now I have my villagers running to the base uh, to town center trying not to lose any of them, and I'm doing pretty good so far. I, uh, I'm about to send out Minutemen. Uh, Minutemen, you gotta, you gotta hold on to it, you gotta save it, uh, and make sure to use it at the perfect moment. It's so good, it, it, you know, without Minutemen, games would be over, you know, by who rushes the best. Uh, it's, it's really useful. Uh, so I got my Minutemen out, and I got my muskets out. And now I'm trying to attack, but I guess I got there a little too late, and he's running away. So, uh, I don't have any population to queue villagers, so I'm waiting for that. And meanwhile, since I can't catch his pikemen with my minutemen, I'm actually attacking him with Husser, and I'm hoping that he'll turn around and let me shoot him. I don't think you've seen my muskets yet, so he's going to come up here and try to kill my Minutemen and uh, Husser. I'm actually surprised that he would run away from just Minutemen and Husser, because he could have beaten that. But anyway, so here he is trying to attack, and then he sees my muskets, and he runs back. And I'm trying to see if I can kill any other guys. And by now, I've already decided I want to go to Fortress. I don't want to do long colonial fights. Uh, one of France's uh, main advantages against any civilization is that they can do a very strong semi-FF. Uh, it's I'm not exactly sure why it's so easy. I think it's just because they have uh, a very easy to manage economy and a good economy for, I mean, it's a good economy. So it's easy to uh, to manage this stuff. So I'm gonna get my um, ten or so muskets out, and I'm going to attack his base. Oh, well, I'm gonna pester a bit actually. I uh, I don't plan to get into a full out fight, but I do know I have the military advantage. So when you have the advantage, don't just hide or wait. Even if you can't like attack his base, you don't want to go for suicide run, but. You should keep pestering, as I'm going to do, uh, take full advantage of map control. 
Meanwhile, since I'm pretty confident I have a larger army than he would, I'm going to send, I'm going to split up my army and try to raid him uh, with my Huster while I try to pester him on the other side of his town center. A lot of times, it's sort of difficult to manage fighting two sides of your base at once. Unfortunately, his explorer was in a good spot, so he saw my Huster, so I'm trying to kill them. And meanwhile, I'm trying to kill the villagers with my crossbows and muskets. And I got two, that's three. It's pretty lucky. Um, and I'm almost, I have the resources now to uh, age up. I'm just got to gather my wood crates. And I queue a husser in case, uh, you know, in case I need it. Um, and also, I will have enough resources to probably queue up a few more husser anyway. So. It's, you don't want resources stockpiled, you want to always spend it, and if you know what you want for it, then go for it. Uh, when you're aging up, you, you know, even though you want fortress veteran units, like, I want Curacers, but, or however you pronounce it, but, you know, if he attacks and I don't have an army, I'm screwed. So, I'm getting out the Husser instead of waiting another 40 seconds. And I chose the fast age up politician, and... You know, with the a fast age of politician, uh, it takes um, a minute, it's a minute shorter, it's only 40 seconds to age up instead of a minute and 40 seconds. And instead of any resources, you just, uh, you get nothing. Uh, so, like, instead of waiting an extra minute for free for Husser, I like to go up early. Because, um, you know, you don't have time to wait for everything to come, especially when you're doing a semi-FF. Uh, for a fast fortress, sometimes it's good to get the uh, extra units since, you know, you, uh, for your early push you might need it. And also, um, it's important to time uh, your shipments according to when you're going fortress. Uh, a lot of the time, I, uh, I, I'll look at, like, how close my next shipment is to coming. And if I have a shipment that's already there or waiting, or if one that's really coming close, then I'm going to go fast age up regardless of uh, what's going on. But um, when when I don't sometimes I'll age up slowly depending if my opponent is being aggressive or has a military advantage. Here I'm going to take advantage of the two falcon net card, which I think is possibly the best H2 unit shipment in the game. Um, two falcon nets, not only is it worth a thousand resources of, you know, coin and wood, but also tactically it's just, is very useful. Um, it's easy to defend when you have a lot of muskets and husser and moon, and they kill skirms. Anyway, uh, always some age pretty quickly, he aged just after I did. Um, normally they go for, Dutch players will go for a Reuter, um, Reuter, sorry for the Dutch. They're called rooters. Uh, rooter uh, skirm spam, and basically they'll just try to outmass you. Since uh, French get up earlier than Dutch, uh, usually it just seems that way. Um, I go for a quick military push instead of sending like uh, a thousand wood or something. I go for all military, and. Uh, so I'm going in there, I separate my control groups into four different groups. I have my range infantry in my first control group, my uh, dragoons in my second, my husser in my third, and my falconets in my fourth. Uh, you gotta just kind of practice this and get it working. Uh, it's the only, I used to only be able to do three control groups, but uh, I just kept trying when I was playing against slower players in unrated games to, to improve my ability to manage control groups, and it worked out well. So since I'm in battle, I'm going for a uh, unit um, upgrade shipment. Since uh, when when you're in battle, if you send like units, uh, they won't get to the battle in time. And if you send an economy shipment, well, then you're really trying to do two different things at once, and it doesn't work. So I usually like to, this is my favorite time to get unit upgrade shipments when I can't reinforce my army, but I want to go military heavy. Um, so here we're fighting and I somehow lose my falconets rather easily and uh, 
So I had to run back, and he has a lot of skirms and uh, no reuters, which is very strange. So I'm going for uh, cures. Normally, I would not recommend going cure heavy against a Dutch, uh, since normally they go heavy on reuter, but I don't see any, and uh, he has a lot of skirms, so cures counter skirms. So you gotta go for the cures. Um, I'm still playing pretty military heavy, and I'm running out of resources now. Uh, there are only a few gold mines on the map, and uh, what's so great about Dutch is that um, Reuters, they cost food and coin, and uh, a lot of coins. Since Dutch have banks, uh, they don't need, they don't depend on as many gold mines as other civilizations. Uh, it's a huge bonus, even though they and even though a bank gathers as fast as like four or so villagers, the tactical use of uh, you know that on that protected and unlimited resource is immense. Especially when you start going to plantations where you're spending 600 resources just so your villagers can continue gathering the resource, and at a very slow rate, it's a difference. And I'm lucky he's uh he's going into my scout radius. Uh, and I'm seeing that he has a lot of skirm, so I'm continuing to mass uh, cures. And uh, this is actually near the final battle of the game. I get some uh, skirm shipment, and uh, I group them together. And I'm also going to send my villagers to fight, because I feel like he's going to attack, and he's not going to back out. So this is going to be a critical fight. And if I lose it, I, I'm dead, because I won't be able to protect my resources. And... Uh, if I win it, then the game will go on. So I um, researched the villager attack upgrade, and I, and I group my villagers with my ranged infantry, since technically they are ranged infantry. And uh, I make sure all my units are you know, at the bow before I send my cavalry in. And I have my ranged infantry and my dragoons try to focus fire on the Swiss pikes while my cures, I try to attack the skirms, but whenever the Swiss pikes come, I run away because Swiss pikes just eat cab up. Um, so, I'm noticing that my poor de bois are um, attacking the villagers, so I try to manage them better. And since he's protecting a skirms to the north, I attack the skirms to the south. Uh, that's the bad thing about when your army is behind your enemy's military closer to his base, you can easily get trapped, and this is what's going to lose him the game. Um, yes. You had to... France's advantages are mostly, you know, just being flexible, and but also they're villagers. They're very strong, and you had to lose them in battle. Uh, by this point, he only has a few pikes, so I attack them with my cures anyway, and try to finish off his skirmisher army. Uh, the game is looking almost decided. Uh, he lost that horribly. That just went horrible for him. So uh, it looks like he's going to die. So now I send a thousand wood. I'm ready to start uh, expanding my economy a little because now I'm I have resources that are secure. Uh, I also notice that he has villagers uh, by the dead hunts over there. So I go and attack them. They're completely unprotected, and uh, there's not much he can do after losing all those villagers, and he's probably out of food, it looks like, so uh, either he goes mills or he can lose an item. Uh, you can ignore what he's saying. He, I guess he's flaming me. Not sure why. Uh, so, yes, and he's about to resign. There we go. So, I hope you enjoyed my game. Uh, this is my first commentary. I hope to do more. Uh, so, uh, yeah, thanks for listening, and I'll see you later at Age Sanctuary. Goodbye.